everyone, and welcome back to the San Francisco 49er franchise on the Football Freaks Sports Network. I'm Husker Eurocat, and it's time once again for more Madden football. In our last contest, the 49ers tangled with another preseason matchup, welcoming the Washington Redskins back to Levi Stadium for round two this season. The Skins jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead, and it looked like the Niners were headed for real trouble. But the 49ers pulled it even at 17 by halftime. In the second half, some tough defense only allowed the Redskins a field goal, and the 49ers would win the game, holding on for a 26 to 20 victory. This week, after a good start against the NFC East teams, San Francisco is on the road in the city of brotherly love, playing against the NFC leaders and undefeated Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are playing lights out football to start this season and boasts the number three ranked scoring offense and number one scoring defense and with that have the number two turnover ranking with a positive eight to their credit. They also lack some depth in the team, most notably at the quarterback and wide receiver positions, but it hasn't seemed to slow them down any this season. This should be a solid test for the 49ers to see how they hold up to an undefeated team. So let's get ready for the 49ers at the Eagles on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The Eagles get the opening kickoff, and Shelton Gibson, their number one draft choice and speed wide receiver, spins at the 35 and is tackled just beyond it. For first and 10, the handoff goes to Ivory, and he only gets a one-yard gain. Nine yards left to go. Ivory is caught in the backfield. Robinson Therese on the stop. So on third and 10 out of the shotgun, Wentz goes to Alshon Jeffrey, and he has the first down out to the 48-yard line. Back to pass again, this time to the left side, and incomplete intended for Torrey Smith. Now on third down, Wentz is caught in the backfield. Duke Iannaccio getting the sack. So the 49ers start from their 35, and Garoppolo is sacked for a five-yard loss. Brandon Graham getting to him on that play. Garoppolo scrambling right, throws. It's complete to George Kittle, and he is in the open. The speed of the tight end gets him into the end zone. Touchdown. 49ers and he's so fast he has to fan his feet after that one's over you see here him catching the ball at the 50 yard line Jalen Watkins misses as well as Ronald Darby and the rest is history seven to nothing Gibson comes out of the end zone again and is clocked at the 15 yard line not much room on that one. First and 10, Wentz back to pass, and it's intercepted by Robinson, and he's inside the five yard line. That interception ricocheted off the hands of Mike Hull and into the waiting hands of Richard Robinson, and all the way back inside the five to the three yard line where the 49ers set up shop and McKinnon takes it right and he's in the end zone for another 49ers score. You see there his knee comes down just inside the end zone and it's a touchdown for the 49ers. 14 to nothing and the Eagles start from their 18 yard line. Wentz back to pass, goes over the middle Complete to Torrey Smith for first down at the 32. 
Now Wentz back again and decides to run and he slides down for a seven yard gain. Third and three, Ivory to the right side and he has the first down with room to spare. Out to the 49 and another Eagle first down. And Ivory goes left this time and it's a nine yard pickup. Second and one out of the shotgun. Wentz back to pass and it's intercepted by Robinson again and he is inside the red zone. Touchdown 49ers. Rashard Robinson read that one all the way and gets his second pick of the day. 21 to nothing. And Gibson only a yard deep in the end zone this time and doesn't even get to the 15. The 49ers special teams unit is doing their job. Now Wentz goes back to pass and throws over the middle complete to Aguilar for a first down. Now at the 27 yard line, Ivory goes up the middle for an eight yard gain. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter with your score 21 to nothing 49ers. Now on third and short, can the Eagles pick this up? Wentz throws complete to Alshon Jeffrey for the first down over the 35 yard line. And from the 39, Wentz is back to pass again, almost intercepted by Duke Ihanacho. Second and 10, another pass upcoming. Wentz goes long and it's caught by Torrey Smith. He's inside the 10, touchdown Eagles. Torrey Smith with some determination goes up and gets that ball away from Jimmy Ward and he is into the end zone. 21 to seven now and the 49ers have it at the 23. McKinnon goes right, breaks the tackle of Watkins and is out past the 35 for the first down. Kittle goes in motion. McKinnon counters to the left side and has another first down and he's out to the 49 yard line. First and 10 and McKinnon again to the left side and he's into Eagle territory. Third and six. Garoppolo is sacked and he fumbled the football. No. And the booth wants to take another look at this because I don't know, Garoppolo looked like he was down. You see him here being tackled by Brandon Graham. And I don't, oh, maybe the ball came out before his knee was down. What are the officials going to say in this case? And a play stands and it's the Eagles football just inside 49er territory. Ivory gets the ball and goes for a first down inside the 40 yard line. Ivory is the single back. Wentz goes back to pass and it's complete to Torrey Smith just outside the red zone at the 21 yard line. From the shotgun and Wentz is sacked by Navarro Bowman. Third and 15, back to pass. And it's complete to Alshon Jeffrey and out of bounds at the four yard line. First and goal and Millen gets into the end zone. That play was so well blocked that even Millen was looking around wondering where the defense was. The score is now 21 to 14, and now it's the 49ers chance again. Garoppolo heads right and throws complete to O'Leary for a first down and out of bounds. And they're gonna say that he came down in bounds. Garoppolo handling the high snap, completes it to Jordan, and he is out of bounds and that brings us to the two minute warning with your score 21 to 14 49ers 
Now out of the shotgun at the 39-yard line. It's complete to Janis over the middle for another first down for the 49ers. And McKinnon goes right, and he has another first down inside the red zone at the 18-yard line. Now with a fake handoff, Garoppolo throws into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Just out of the reach of Kenny Bell. Out of the shotgun again, and it's incomplete to Lester Jordan. So that brings on Robbie Gold for a 35-yard kick, and it's through the uprights. 24-14 to 14 is your score with a minute and two seconds left. Can the Eagles respond? Wentz back to pass. Torrey Smith with the catch. It's only six yards. And another pass and a run by Wentz. And he is tackled short of the first down and down and injured as well. We'll have to track that as it could really impact the Eagles. Third and two. And the rookie, Justin Floyd, gets it out to Alshon Jeffrey for the first down. Now from the 39-yard line, the pass goes long, and it's out of bounds and incomplete. Second and 10. Another pass upcoming, and Charles Tapper gets the sack back at the 34. Third and long. Floyd goes back to pass and it's incomplete knocked down by Duke Ian Nacho. And that takes us to halftime with your score 24 to 14 49ers. What an unexpected turn of events. Another 21 point first quarter for these 49ers and they have taken control of this game. Can the Eagles change this around in the second half? Welcome back to Levi Stadium for our second half coverage between the Eagles and visiting 49ers. In a game that from the stats anyway, should see the Eagles ahead in the game, the 49ers hold a 10 point advantage and with the status of the injury to Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz, and some thoughts from the coaches. Let's go to our girl in the know, Eurocat Baby on the sideline. Well, Hesker, it looks like the Eagles will be without starting quarterback Carson Wentz for the rest of the game. That really hard hit that he took from both Reuben Foster and Navarro Bowman left him with a shoulder injury to his throwing arm that will keep him out for the rest of this game and may impact his performance going forward as well. That means that the rookie backup, Justin Floyd, will have to guide them the rest of the way. I asked Coach Peterson how he thinks this could impact the offensive unit, and he said that the loss of Carson is big, but he has confidence that Justin will be able to bring the Eagles back. In order to do that, he said that the running game is going to have to pick up the pace here in the second half. With a few changes in the blocking scheme, he said they should be able to accomplish that. Coach Shanahan said that while the Niners were able to have a really good first quarter, the Eagle defense has made some changes that they're trying to adapt to for the second half. He said the defense has to continue to play outstanding football as the game progresses if they want to continue their success. Thank you, Eurocat baby. And that sounds like each coach is expecting a defensive second half of football. Let's find out how true that is as we get ready for the Eagles and 49ers to get busy. The 49ers get set for the kickoff and at the goal line, Christopher Edwards handles the kick and is out past the 20, past the 30 and almost breaks it. He just would have had to go to the right just a little bit. And Garoppolo hands off to McKinnon, and he's outside the 35 for a seven-yard gain. Now on second down, Garoppolo goes right and hits Butler at the 40-yard line. They're going to give him the 41 and a first down. This time the pass goes to the right side, complete to Kenny Bell 
for the first down just inside Eagle territory. And Garoppolo is sacked. A big nine-yard loss. Back to pass is Garoppolo. Over the middle to Goodwin. Complete for a huge first down. Inside the 35-yard line. And once again, Garoppolo's on the move and completes it to Kenny Bell, and he's inside the 15-yard line. Wow. Jimmy G is finding ways to extend the play. Now inside the 15 at the 12. The handoff goes to McKinnon. He has the first down and is cut down just shy of the end zone. On second down, the pass goes to Kyle Juszczyk, and he fumbles the football. Picked up by Walker, and he's outside the five, but there's a booth review. Kind of looked like Juszczyk was down to me. You see Darby there with the big hit, but he, Juszczyk still has it in his hands, and it looks like the ground caused the fumble, and the play is reversed. Third down. Snap the ball. Oh, and with a late audible, they don't get the play off in time. That backs them up to the seven-yard line. Garoppolo over the middle to Jordan at the goal line, and they're saying that he wasn't in. So that brings on Robbie Gold for a 20-yard boot, and it's through the middle, 27 to 14. Now can the Eagles come back from this? And Ivory is caught in the backfield by Mike Hull for a two-yard loss. Floyd back to pass and goes long, and it's caught. Mac Hollins makes the grab inside 49er territory at the 44. The pass is complete to Zach Ertz inside the 40-yard line for an eight-yard gain. And now it's third and two. And the pass goes long and it's broken up by Duke Iannaccio. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter with your score 27 to 14, 49ers. And the Eagles stay on the field for fourth down. Floyd hands off to Ivory and he gets the first down inside the 35. Now on third and 11 from the 34. The pass is incomplete, broken up by Prince Umukamara. And again, the fourth down, the Eagles go for it, and it's incomplete turnover on downs. The 49er defense hangs tough. Now it's the 49ers ball with Jones in the backfield, and he goes to the left side. Stiff arms Jordan Hicks and is just shy of the sticks. Second and inches. Alone in the backfield, Garoppolo throws over the middle to Jordan and it's a first down at the 41. And Garoppolo gets sacked by Destiny Vio and Joe Walker. Back to pass again is Garoppolo and over the middle for a first down to Nick O'Leary. The 49ers with an empty backfield. The pass is complete inside the red zone for another first down to Kenny Bell. Second and seven. McKinnon on the wheel route, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Alden Smith just isn't fast enough to get all the way over there, and McKinnon is free into the end zone. The kickoff. To Gibson comes out of the end zone and he doesn't get to the 15 yard line. He has a problem with that 15, I'm telling you. Floyd keeps Ivory in to block for him and throws over the middle complete to Aguilar out past the 30 yard line for a first down from the 31. Another pass upcoming and it's incomplete knockdown by Ross Cockrell third down the pass is incomplete intended for Alshon Jeffrey and he can't handle it that gives the ball back to the 49ers and Garoppolo is sacked 
Another first round draft choice of the Eagles, Derek Barnett gets him for a seven yard loss. That brings us to the two minute warning. And with an update from the sideline, let's go to Eurocat baby. The 49ers are breathing a little better this week than last with a 20 point lead at the two minute warning. Their focus is on keeping the ball for the rest of the game. And for the Eagles, it's simple. They need to get the ball back and score quickly and often if they want to put up any kind of fight for this game. Thank you for that. And as you said, it should be a whole lot easier to focus with a 20-point lead. Now on second and 17, O'Leary goes in motion and the handoff is to McKinnon and he gets a first down outside the 35 with some tough running but Lester Jordan is called for holding, and that one's coming back. Alden Smith is down and injured, holding his shoulder. We'll have to find out what that's all about. Second and 23. Garoppolo lets it fly, and it's complete to Kenny Bell inside the 45 of the Eagles. And there's another delay of game penalty against the 49ers, and that'll drive him back five yards. So it's first and 15. Garoppolo alone in the backfield, and he has dropped. Elijah Qualls getting to him on that one for a nine-yard loss. McKinnon goes right side, and he's inside the 45, and that brings us to the end of the game, 34 to 14. 49ers. Well, this game just didn't turn out to be the obstacle for the 49ers that was expected. Of course, the injury to Carson Wentz was counterproductive to the needs of the Eagles for this game, and word is that he'll be back for next week's game against the Cardinals. So we'll see then how much of a difference that may have made. The shoulder injury to former 49er Alden Smith is going to keep him sidelined for at least two weeks, so 35-year-old Tamba Holly will need to step up to the plate for the Eagles. The offense, while being able to score 10 points and pull ahead in the total offensive yardage category by almost 100 yards, was outstanding against this tough Eagle defense. But the defense stole the show again this week in a second half effort that was impressive to say the least. 57 total yards, three first downs, none of which were on third down, and no more red zone trips. It was clear to see that the Eagles had to start passing the football despite Coach Peterson's rushing wishes. Three yards on three carries. <laughs> But I like to think that along with that, the defense did an outstanding job today. Look at Jimmy Garoppolo's numbers on the day. Not an outstanding day for yardage, of course, but 275 yards is nothing to scoff at. But more importantly, he threw no interceptions in this game and threw for two touchdowns in the effort. I'd say he proved quite an asset today. That seemed to be significant because Jarek McKinnon, although having nice rushing numbers, didn't have another 100 plus day. I'm sure though that he'll take what he got against this Eagles defense. The receiving core led by Kenny Bell today, aside from Lester Jordan's drop pass, had an outstanding day, not missing a pass, I'm sure that did a lot of bolstering Garoppolo's completion percentage, but it seemed that he had a better sense of being on target today. Richard Robinson recorded two picks today with the defense coming on big. I know that with Wentz on the field, they got a quite a number of yards, but even then the defense was playing very well. And as soon as the rookie came in the game, well, it was all over for the Eagles. Goes to show that if Wentz gets hurt for the season, the Eagles will be in serious trouble. 
Next, the 4-1 49ers will meet the 1-4 Patriots in Levi Stadium. You heard right, folks. The Pats are 1-4 to start the season. After beating the Dolphins at home in their opener, they've had four straight losses. Tom Brady has retired, and that leaves former 49er C.J. Beathard to lead the Patriots. Right about now, they probably realize they made a big mistake when they were willing to give up Jimmy G. They still have an outstanding receiver crew, but lack a solid ball hurler to get them the ball. Outstanding as well is the quality of the defense, led by Sue Hightower, Gilmore, Thomas, and Barry. I think it'll be a challenge to see if this offense can move the ball on them. I know that one and four sounds bad, but it's this type of team that's dangerous and hopefully this won't be a breakout game for them. Once again, thank you for tuning in to our coverage of the San Francisco 49er franchise on the Football Freak Sports Network. Please keep in mind that if you enjoyed this video, leave a like so that others can enjoy it as well. And if you would like to be notified when there is a new one, simply subscribe by clicking on my icon at the end of the video. The 49ers have managed a 4-1 start to their season. Can they keep up the momentum and come away with a win against the Pats that obviously need a solid replacement for Tom Brady? After dropping their opener, they've been able to create a really good win streak and need to keep that going. So until I see you back in Levi Stadium for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew here, this is Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day everyone.